to share some of the stories that we're seeing. I want to share some of the high-level uh, pieces of information about Twitter. We're growing, we're global, and we're mobile. So first, growth. We're growing fast. We have over 400 million unique visits to Twitter every month. We have over 400, sorry, we have over uh, 140 million active users. And we're also up to about 340 million tweets a day. That's a lot of content. The conversations are growing. So just to give you some you know, perspective of scale, so every three days or so, we're seeing about one billion tweets. We're processing almost one billion tweets. And so it took us originally three years, two months, and a day for us to reach that first billion tweet. So, uh, so that's a, a, a lot of conversations going on around the world. Around the world, we're global. So over 70% of all of our accounts are outside of the United States. From the beginning, Twitter knew that we were a global company and that we needed to do a good job to help scale our business and our product um, to, to fit the international market. We're now available in 28 languages. Um, we use a, a, a crowdsource model where we ask the community and volunteers from around the world in multiple languages we have over 600,000 translators today who volunteer to make Twitter available in their languages. Um, some fun facts, we have one out of six accounts that are set to Spanish. It's one of our most active accounts after English. And what's really exciting for us is that we've seen Arabic grow as the fastest language ever on Twitter. We recently launched Twitter in four of the rights and left uh, languages, in Arabic, and Hebrew, and Farsi, and Urdu. And so it's very exciting to make sure that we reach every person on the planet and make Twitter as accessible and useful to them wherever they are. Japan was one of the first markets to adopt Twitter. Um, they, they adopted Twitter early, um, mostly because everyone was on a mobile device, and they've become some of our most prolific tweeters. In fact, one of our jokes is that in, in, in Japanese and Chinese and Korean, all the double like languages, you can practically write a novel with 140 characters. <laughs> We have three offices outside the U.S. We're a six-year-old company. We're in London and, and Dublin and Tokyo, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, more information later. Third, we're powered by mobile. Twitter was born on a mobile device. That's why we're at 140 characters. So we know how important mobile uh, usage is around the world and how important it is to make sure that Twitter is accessible no matter what device you're using. If you're here in Berlin on your iPad with a Wi-Fi connection, or if you're in Sub-Saharan Africa on a rudimentary Nokia phone, it's important that we're able to make sure that you can access and use and discover the value of Twitter. In fact, one out of six of our users actually signed up on a mobile device. There are millions of ways to use Twitter. Out of those 140 million active users, 60% of our users actually produce tweets and listen whereas 40% are just listening. And what that has taught us is that you don't need to tweet, you don't need to, tweet to get value out of Twitter. Um, just by comparison to YouTube, only 1% of YouTube users will actually produce the content. Um, the rest are, are listening and watching. So content, there's a lot of content on, on Twitter. And we wanted to share a little bit about who are the top content producers on Twitter. Politicians, no surprise. They want to connect with their, their electorate. They want to connect with their audiences. We've seen political leaders around the world join Twitter. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We've certainly see this, seen this in the United States. We're seeing this in other markets. 2012 is a very important year globally for a lot of presidential elections. We've seen a lot of great um, activity happening in Mexico and France um, in particular. Athletes. We've seen athletes from around the world, um, especially the, the basketball players, the soccer players, handball players, tennis players. Um, there's a lot of content from a lot of the athletes on Twitter. Humanitarians. We're seeing humanitarians and their agencies and organizations around the world using Twitter to help extend their brand, to help engage with audiences, to share their causes, and to raise money. <laughs> Entertainers. From Justin Bieber to Matthias Schweighofer, we're seeing a lot of entertainers, movie stars, and musicians around the world join. And then TV shows. Um, in the US, at least, 100% of the most popular TV shows are actually on Twitter. And they're doing a really good job about integrating and, and engaging the audience to um, participate in the shows. 
Today we have roughly 38 heads of state or their government representatives on Twitter, from the White House to Number 10 to Paul Gadami in Rwanda to um, uh, to, uh, to uh, the Blue House in Korea, and, um, and and we've seen a lot of this uh, this grow around the world. And people tweet in different ways. Some are very formal. Um, the White House is pretty formal, pretty engaging. Paul Gadami, if you tweet to him today, he'll probably tweet to you right back. Um, another data point for you. Roughly 80% of the G20 are on Twitter. The only five that are missing are Indonesia, Italy, Saudi Arabia, China, which government blocks us and doesn't allow us to uh, participate, and Germany. And, uh, and so one of the things <laughs> that um, we're hopeful about Germany is maybe you guys can get Merkel on Twitter to trend using the hashtag Merkel on Twitter.